Hello music fans. Uh, so I'm going to make this video here about my top 13 prog rock albums from after the year 2000, 2000 and later. I made another video about my top prog rock albums from before the year 2000. And prog rock is very different in the 2000s than it was in the 1900s. So I, it was hard to make just like a top 13 prog rock in general to get the balance of new versus old right. So I figured to just do the pre-2000 stuff and then do the post-2000 stuff in different videos. And starting us off with number 13 is Sound Awake by Carnivool. And uh, as with the other top 13 video, I'm only going to be doing one album per band on, on here to avoid a band dominating the whole list. But Carnivool is an excellent Australian progressive rock band. And this is their second album released in 2009. Um, I'm a progressive metal fan, so some of these items on some of these uh, albums on the list might have a little bit of a metal edge to them but not enough for me to consider them progressive metal albums i still consider them progressive rock this one's got a little bit of metal influence to it a little bit of alternative uh, really cool rhythmic stuff going on here good melodic vocals it's all singing um, i think almost everything on here is all singing, no screaming on the progressive rock side. Um, screaming was what kind of uh, tips a band over to progressive metal in my mind. So I think that everything on here is is all clean vocals, uh, just melodic singing. Uh, my second album on the list, which is going to be my number 12 favorite prog rock album from the 2000s millennium, is Remedy Lane by Pain of Salvation. This is from the year... 2002. They're a Swedish progressive rock band. And again, some of their little bit of metal influence coming out on this one. Some of their other albums, I would say, are progressive metal albums. They have a lot more metal to them. This one, still pretty melodic, pretty um, more on the rock side. And it's, I'd say it's their best album. And my number 11 is The Construction of Light by King Crimson from the year 2000. So here's a, a legacy band that also appeared in my uh, video on top albums from before the year 2000. With their, They had the oldest album on the list, their 1969 album um, in the Court of the Crimson King, their debut album. Um, but they kept making really great really great albums even into the 2000s uh, so construction of light it's progressive rock i considered maybe the power to believe which is actually maybe my favorite king crimson album is their last one but it's almost progressive metal so i didn't think i thought it was maybe a bit too metal to put on this list so i went with the construction of light uh, there's a there's hints of metal in here some blues they have prozac blues as the opening song there's crazy instrumental virtuosity on here. Uh, it's got a bit of an industrial vibe to it. Uh, an interesting thing about King Crimson is they evolve a lot. So uh, they have a quite a variety in their catalog. Some of their earlier albums could be like soft and jazzy. Some of them have, you know, a lot of ballads and others ha have like metal aspects to them. Some are full on like jammy, psychedelic, and some are kind of new wave and reggae and pop and they have all sorts of different sounds and this one they kind of had progressive rock typical stuff but sprinkling some metal and industrial in there all right and my number 10 is going to be by the band the deer hunter which is act four rebirth and reprise so their discography is they go even further than having a concept album. They're like coheating Cambria a little bit in that they have a concept discography where they have a whole uh, narrative that continues throughout their um, throughout their discography. Xanthocroid's another band that does that as well, um, where there's a whole narrative and there's different acts and things like that. I don't follow the story that much, but the music here on Act 4 
is really, really awesome. Um, I think my favorite song here would be The Old Haunt, uh, but everything in here is great. They're a progressive rock band, but they also kind of would appeal to just people who are indie rock music fans because they're pretty accessible, kind of catchy. Like I could see this stuff being played on the radio, no problem. Unlike a lot of other stuff on this list, which is a little bit more out there. This one's pretty grounded, pretty catchy, but also experimental, also symphonic and progressive, time signature changes, things like that, cool instrumentation. And speaking of concept discographies, my number nine is going to be The Afterman Ascension by Coheed and Cambria. This is from 2012. And this might be my favorite album from them, although there's the other one that has Welcome Home on it, Good Apollo, I'm Burning Star for. It has this really long title. I don't even remember. I can't even remember the album title because it's way too long. This one's shorter, shorter album title, The Afterman Ascension. I decided to put this one on. It's also kind of got maybe a little bit of metal influence, but also some like post-hardcore emo and pop punk influences as well, while maintaining the prog, being a concept album, concept discography. My favorite song here would be Key Entity Extraction 1, Domino the Destitute, uh, which is the second track, and it's the longest one on here. It's 7 minutes and 51 seconds. All right, on to number, what am I at? Number 8, Porcupine Tree, Fear of the Blank Planet. This is their ninth album released in 2007. It's the second last album they ever made. And it's my favorite Porcupine Tree album. It has the amazing long epic on it, Anesthetize, 17 minutes and 42 seconds. That's probably my favorite song, but if picking an epic is cheating. And that, and that also features Alex Lifeson of, of Rush on it, which is great. Um, Way Out of Here is also another great song that features Robert Fripp of King Crimson. Uh, but every song on here is amazing. Yeah, 10 out of 10 album. Everything from here on in is gold. Um, number seven, Deloused in the Comatorium by Mars Volta from 2003. This is their first album. They are kind of psychedelic influenced progressive rock, very artsy, high pitch vocals, crazy guitar that's almost like sometimes it almost sounds like it's out of time and kind of sloppy, but it's also still amazing and virtuosic at the same time. Um, some of their other albums kind of go off into the ambient noise a little bit too much, but this one I think is a bit more concise and the songs all feel like songs. So that, that'd be my complaint with some of their other albums and why I kind of picked this one. That's my favorite from them. All their albums are good though, but there is a little bit of the weird ambient psychedelic noise foolery that uh, it's just not my thing. My favorite song on here might actually be Inertiatic ESP, which is the second track, but is kind of the first song because the, the intro track like bleeds into that. And I like listening to them both back to back, like the first and second track. Uh, it's just an amazing way to start an album. All right, number six. I'm going to pick a lesser known one here. Orbs is the band. And the album is called Asleep Next to Science. And this is, uh, it features Dan Briggs from Between the Buried and Me. He plays guitar on this album, though he plays bass in Between the Buried and Me. Um, very cool album it's uh yeah progressive rock it's got a little a bit of the post hardcore influences the vocals might not be for everybody it could sound like kind of like the whiny emo style of vocals almost but the music is great it's progressive rock uh really cool album uh yeah every song on here is is great top five my number five is the album Ghost by the Devin Townsend Project. And this one's interesting. It's progressive rock, but it's very like, it's almost like meditation music. It's very ambient. It's folky. It's 
Uh, got some post rock vibes and re relaxation, kind of like listening to a Sigur Ros album. If you want to just like chill and meditate, this one is a very relaxing one, probably the most relaxing one on the list. My favorite song on here would be the long one, Feather. It's 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, really, really solid song. We're in the top four now. My number four is The Raven That Refused to Sing and Other Stories by Stephen Wilson. He, uh, he was the founder of Porcupine Tree, who I mentioned as well on this list, but he has some solo albums, and this is my favorite of his solo albums. Hank and Not a Race is also great. Um, I'm not as big on his most recent two solo albums as they, they're not as progressive anymore. Uh, but this one's great. Every song on here, very solid. Number three is going to be Molina by Leprous. And this came out in 2017. It's progressive rock, but it's got a little metal influence as well. It's very like bouncy and rhythmic. It has really cool syncopated rhythms that are catchy and no no screaming some of their earlier work was more progressive metal it had screaming and stuff but now they're very melodic very catchy catchy sing-along choruses the vocals are pretty high pitch um, and that could great on some people some people might not like that uh, i think they're great yeah every song on here really good number two i'm going to pick something from opeth and I picked Encoda Venom. So I had them on my progressive metal list too with Ghost Reveries. But I wanted to capture their progressive rock side on this list because they went progressive rock starting at the album Heritage. And I just decided Encoda Venom would be my favorite of that bunch. I also really like Heritage. Um, so it was kind of between those two. I prefer those two over Pale Communion and What's the other one called? Sorceress. Um, so yeah, Encoda Venom, really solid album from 2019. And my number one progressive rock album from this millennium, from the 2000s, is Thank You Scientist, Maps of Non-Existent Places from 2012. And this is a progressive rock band that has horns, high-pitched vocals, there's crazy guitar work on here, shredding solos, amazing riffs, stuff on fretless guitar, which sounds amazing. There's violin on this album. There's trumpet, trombone, saxophone. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of jazz fusion influence. Maybe a little bit of metal sprinkled in there. A little bit of the post-hardcore emo vocal sound but progressive rock through and through. And there you go. That is it for my top 13 progressive rock albums from the year 2000 and onwards. If you haven't watched my other video on the pre-2000 uh, progressive rock albums, definitely check that out. Also, let me know if you have any recommendations. I'm always looking for other stuff, and hopefully you found some cool stuff here to check out as well. Peace out.